The Rams' Wednesday's practice is something of a rebirth. The last game is officially behind them. From this point forward, their focus is solely on the upcoming challenge, the Atlanta Falcons. Coach Steve Spagnuolo arrived two seasons ago with a philosophy that emphasized accountability, character, and above all, team. It has propelled St. Louis to more victories this season than the previous three. It's been a concerted effort to hire good people of high character who did their jobs really well. Uh, and we think we have a combination of that, not only with players, uh, but coaches, people in the building, on all different uh, facets of this business. The day is also something of a reunion. Jackson, like his teammates, takes pleasure in seeing familiar faces. One of his best friends on the team, hard-hitting defensive back Ashimago Atugwe, has been with the Rams since 2005. Well, we really support each other and in, in each other's endeavors, and uh, we enjoy being around each other. And whenever you have like a, a bond like that, a brotherhood like that, it, trans, it carries over to the field. Where Atugwe is one of St. Louis's veteran leaders, rookie quarterback Sam Bradford is one of the Rams' future superstars. Taken with the first overall pick in the 2009 NFL Draft, the Heisman winner's impact has been immediate and dramatic. People know that I had back surgery. I called Sam for my operating table, um, not operating table, but my operating bed. I didn't tell him, you know, that I was in the bed in the hospital, but I, one, I congratulated him on being drafted one overall, and two, I reassured him that um, I would take as much of the pressure off him that I could. I really didn't know what to expect, you know, as far as, you know, practice, being around him every day, what he was going to be like. You know, as far as a teammate, you know, someone off the field, and you know, he's probably exceeded every expectation I had. I mean, he's been absolutely awesome. You know, I think he has probably one of the hardest work ethics that I've ever seen. No list of Jackson's teammates would be complete without the man who paves his way on the field. Fullback Mike Carney. They call themselves the Hammer Twins. Carney is Sledge, and Jackson is Jack. As of yet, no one else uses the nicknames. Neither seems to care. Gosh, I, I, use, I use a lot of different analogies to explain to people what I do for Steven. Personal bodyguard on the field, uh, secret service agent for the president, um, pretty much just clearing out, the, clearing out the way for him. The relationship between running back and fullback is unlike any other in the NFL. They are two halves of a highly specialized unit. One is a superstar, the other the football equivalent of an everyman. That is, to everyone except Jackson. A lot of people wouldn't sign up for the job. It's been, it's been some lean years, and for him to sign up, want to come here and help you know, turn this, this um, franchise around, help me out in the running game, says a lot about him. That night brings a reunion of a different kind. One of Jackson's two older sisters, Rhonda, arrives from Las Vegas. Steven was such a small guy when he first started till you, you know, you felt bad for him always getting pounded. But I have a lot of memories because, you know, he just, he was awesome as a kid playing football. We spent a lot of time together, so much so that he kind of knows what I'm thinking without me saying it. And I know what he's thinking without him saying it. At the end of the day, he's my brother. I'm gonna take care of him like he's my brother. I'm gonna be here when football ends because he's my brother. So we stay like that. We, we try to keep it simple. In St. Louis, Missouri, hard work, principles, and character are more than just words. They are a way of life. In that sense, the Rams and St. Louis are a perfect fit. The players who have won in a Rams uniform, from Cleveland to Los Angeles to St. Louis, have all shared something in common. A selfless dedication to team. A passion 
to be the best. And a fierce desire to win, even at the cost of personal sacrifice. It is a legacy that running back Steven Jackson is driven to continue. You consider the Rams' record since 2006. 06 was his breakout year. The team was only 500 at 8-8. Eight eight. The next season, they win three games. 08, they win two games. 09, they win one game. Now they're back to respectability and right around 500. But what Stevens accomplished uh, on some, let's be honest, some bad football teams is remarkable. Through seven years, Jackson's personal accomplishments are staggering. For five consecutive campaigns, he has rushed for over 1,000 yards. And in week seven of this year, Jackson eclipsed Hall of Famer Eric Dickerson as the Rams' all-time leading rusher. I coached against Marshall, and I actually had uh, Eric at the Indianapolis Colts. So, you know, now they're all different kind of guys. Dickerson was a smooth cruiser, deceptive home run hitter. Marshall, a move a minute. I mean, the best open play guy. Steven is destructive. I mean, he, he's a guy that will, he will get his pad level down, and he will hurt you. Physically, he's like a linebacker, or bigger than a linebacker, hitting some of the guys trying to bring him down. So that helps. And Steven is a guy who actually enjoys that contact. I think that uh, he likes to try and find the biggest guy on the field and put a hit on him early in the game to send a message. And, and you know, Steven Jackson intimidates. I can't take credit for this. Somebody else described Steven's style as a rolling ball of butcher knives. And that's kind of the way it is. The worst thing in the world a linebacker wants to do is go into his pass drop 10 or 15 yards deep and then see Steven Jackson sneak out of the backfield and catch the ball with a head of steam. His relationship with the local media has evolved since his first seasons in the league. As a young player, Jackson's emotions sometimes got the better of him. Those days are distant memories. Steven was always a big presence. He was always a talent on the field, but now you're seeing someone who, uh, he's very candid, very honest, as you would know, but now he's got a more mature, thoughtful approach to how he delivers his message at times, uh, how he carries himself a little bit. He is, he's without question, he's the leader in the locker room. How many guys will, will, will play for a team that's 6-42, and 42, and over those three years, you never hear one word of complaint. You never hear one word of, of, that would convey, oh, woe is me. I deserve better. I want out of here. Not once did he ever go there. And I, and I think he, he's come from a guy that people weren't sure who he was or what he represented now. He's, a, uh, he, he's really kind of a tower of strength. He's, he's viewed as a, uh, just a great leader and a guy who really paid, paid the price to try to get this football program to better days. After two days of practice, some downtime is in order. For Jackson and his fullback, Mike Carney, that means Thursday night football. Hey, I don't think the screen's big enough. I can't. He might, he might go Oxus. <laughs> imagine, imagine this guy on this screen. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Six foot two, torn, forty five pounds, five percent body fat, and he's eating a sucker. <laughs> Sledge and Jack. It's the Hammer Twins. I'm Sledge, and this is Jack. <laughs> it's tough watching other running backs on TV, you know. You just can't compare. You can't hold a candle to this guy. Good times. I just wish I could see this game. I can't even see it. 